Ok, so our next speaker is Alan Hunt Bediener talking about catching the buzz, drugs or dharma. And again, that sort of duality thing that I'm hoping we can sort of transcend or integrate um, here, here today and tomorrow. Um, I, again, I'm not going to read the abstracts here because first of all, they're in the program and um, you know, I want to talk about the people themselves. Um, Alan is uh, a writer and activist who's been writing in the area of Buddhism, ecology and psychedelics for many years. This is a man who is actually implementing, uh, taking action on some of the wonderful sort of mystical insights or nature mysticism or integrative sort of ecological feelings that we often get on psychedelics. This is a man who's, who's, um, who's moving forward on it, who's taking action. Um, uh, how Buddhism relates to modern uh, social problems. He's a contributing editor at Tricycle Magazine, serves on the board of directors of Rainforest Action Network. He edited the book Zigzag Zen, Buddhism and Psychedelics uh, with Alex uh, Gray um, doing the artwork for Chronicle Books in 2002, as well as two other books of collected essays, Dharma Gaya, A Harvest in Buddhism and Ecology, uh, which I think had an introduction by the Dalai Lama? Yes. And so, um, you know, this is the real deal, very integrated into, into society, into making things real, and also into the usefulness of psychedelics. Um, his other um, uh, collected essay book is Mindfulness in the Marketplace, Compassionate Responses to Consumerism. Um, his new book currently in the works is called Buddha Land, The Eight Great Places of Pilgrimage in India. Uh, Alan has got a master's degree in Buddhist studies from the College of Buddhist Studies in LA and is an adjunct uh, professor currently teaching at CIIS, California Institute for Integral Studies um, in San Francisco. So I'm going to turn you over to the very, very capable hands of Alan hunt -Bediener. Alan? Well, it's a little daunting to follow Daniel Pinchback, but uh, somebody has to do it. Um, <clears throat> first, I'd like to express my appreciation and gratitude to Kevin Balktick for manifesting this extraordinary event, and to Neil Goldsmith for including me, and to uh, all the other speakers and the staff and all the volunteers and the people that made this gathering today possible. My own qualifications, how's the sound? Is it uh, okay? In the back? OK. <clears throat> My own qualifications for speaking before you today, um, I'd say pale in comparison to the esteemed and prominent researchers in this field that make up most of the rest of the schedule. Uh, even in terms of personal field experience, I am decidedly a neophyte. Um, I'm curious, will all those who have not taken LSD dare to raise your hands at this moment? Ah, oh, thank you. I always think I'm the only one. <laughs> that's, that's great. Um, actually, for my part, there have been a fair number of journeys with uh, the mushroom teacher, uh, other plant teachers, some interesting vine time with uh, Terence McKenna in his botanical dimension, um, and some experience with the entheogens, the newer class of entheogens as popularized by uh, Sasha and, and Ann Shulgin uh, and others. But the points that I'd like to make here today derive more from the academic experience of uh, compiling a book about Buddhism and psychedelics that Neil referred to called Zigzag Zen, uh, for which Alex Gray created some of the most compelling and uh, beautiful psychedelic art. Um, I don't know if Alex is here, but thank you again, Alex. It's been six years since Zigzag Zen was released uh, it was based largely on a special section which I edited in Tricycle Magazine in the fall of 1996. The book was published by Chronicle Books in 2002, and it was really the first, I think, of its kind to examine the relationship between Buddhism and psychedelics through a variety of voices and perspectives. Each of the 33 contributors uh, had different stories to tell, different circumstances, different substances, uh, different lessons to draw from. For some, it was a story about giving into temptation, uh, suffering a lack of clarity, or worse, uh, lasting confusion and addiction. For others, it was a brief glimpse into a rarefied world of uh, intense sense impressions and you know, fanciful imagery. Uh, for others still, it was a, uh, a breakthrough, a th a th an arrival at the threshold of what the Buddhist teachings were really about with unforgettable, if in some cases fleeting, insights. 
All the contributors had a significant story to tell, and each person's facet of the truth of drugs and dharma remain riveting and uh, revealing. My 20-year fascination with Buddhism is primarily about how it shows up in the modern world, how it informs the challenges of modern life and our social struggles. My earlier books on Buddhism focus uh, on uh, Buddhism in relation to economics and globalization, which I think is due for an update after the events of the last week, and Buddhism and the ecological crisis. But why psychedelics? <clears throat> Certainly the use and abuse of, uh, of drugs are a giant social and legal problem, uh, created of course mainly by people who think it's a problem, and in some cases who want it to be a problem, uh, certainly the structures and thinking in place to control drug use in our society derive more, uh, actually drive the, the lion's share of most of the uh, inappropriate use and abuse. While psychedelics definitely lurk in the backgrounds of, uh, and the histories of most first generation Buddhist teachers in America and in Europe, uh, actually a side note on that, when I was putting together Zigzag Zen, I failed to find one teacher uh, who did not have a psychedelic history. The one, actually I did find one, but then someone told me later that they were uh, covering it up. <laughs> so, uh, but today we find many of these same teachers um, advising against this path that they once traveled. The fifth precept, the Buddhist admonition against drinking intoxicating liquors, is frequently touted as the end of conversation about the possibility of using psychedelics, regardless of the sincerity or intensity of the higher purpose that motivates such a journey. In fact, the intentional use of consciousness expanding psychedelics for personal growth purposes has very little to do with, say for example, imbibing a bottle of gin. Buddhism and psychedelics share a great deal in common, an acute attraction to mindfulness, uh, an appreciation uh, for present moment awareness, and the primacy of direct experience. In their purest applications, they share the same ultimate purpose, the attainment of liberation for the mind. Few Buddhists make the claim that psychedelic use is a path itself. Uh, some maintain that it's a legitimate gateway, and others acutely aware of the uh, inconvenient duality of any chemically dependent spiritual pursuit, uh, feel that Buddhism and psychedelics don't mix at all. But just as Buddhism itself, uh, according to its founder, must be held to the test of personal experience and to the wholesomeness or unwholesomeness of the results personally felt. So also must the question of how or if psychedelics can be a part of Dharma practice. Buddhism is a path of freedom, the Vasudhi Magga, as it's known in the Pali language. And so we are all free. In fact, we must be free to make these choices for ourselves. Encouraging critical examination and analysis and the freedom to make discoveries for oneself is an essential foundation of Buddhism. And it's found as far back as the Kalama Sutra. The Kalamas lived in an area of Northwest India called Kasaputta uh, during the time of the Buddha and they were primarily of the merchant class. The Buddha was advising them on how to verify what is true. And I think the Buddha's advice to them bears some uh, quoting in, in a little detail here. <clears throat> he said, do not go upon what has been acquired by repeated hearing, nor upon tradition, nor upon rumor, nor upon what is in scripture, nor upon one's surmise, nor upon an axiom, nor upon logical reasoning, nor upon a bias towards a notion that has been pondered over, or another's seemingly keen mind nor upon consideration that this monk is our teacher. The Buddha warned the Kalamas, only when you yourselves know in your experience that these things are good, that these things are not blamable, that these things are praised by the wise, undertaken and observed to lead to benefit and happiness in you, should you abide in them. Just as social prohibitions on what ideas to let into your consciousness are an anathema in Buddhism, so must be uh, the restrictions on what plants to let in. Tibetan Buddhists, for one, have developed over the centuries a wide field of psychopharmacology, 